Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the Zero 320 AA clear anodized aluminum mortise style automatic door bottom. You can see the end profile there. What you're looking at here is the hinge side of this automatic door bottom versus the lock side. The difference is that this has the adjusting screw in the end of it. That's the brass shaped bolt that's sticking out partially. The more that I turn it counterclockwise, the further out it will retract. And the more I were to reverse that and turn it clockwise, the further back into the housing it will go. And the amount of projection that that uh, shows is directly related to the amount of drop of the door bottom. And that's really the magic behind an automatic door bottom. So I'm going to put the end onto the desk, onto my desk surface. And I'm going to push down and emulate. You can see that the bottom starts to drop out there a little bit. And it's, it's too hard to really do by hand. No, I can do it. So this is a 42-inch door, door bottom, so it's a bit hard to show. But when I push on the, uh, the adjusting bolt here, you can see that the bottom drops. Okay? It doesn't drop evenly, and that's, by, that's, it's, that's the design of this. So let's, let's back up a little bit. An automatic door bottom is this. It's, an, it's a device that mounts to the bottom of the door such that when the door gets to its very final degree of closing, that plunger, regardless of the type, surface mounted, mortised, semi-mortised, uh, makes contact with the jam. As the door closes, it's over here, it's going to make contact with the frame. As the door opens, of course, that plunger has the ability to pop out because the door is being taken away, taken away from the frame. So as the door closes, the plunger hits the frame. The plunger has only one direction to go. It has to go in. That plunger is di directly connected to a very long flat spring in, the in this housing that is going to be basically between the, the hinge, the uh, adjusting bolt, and this screw. That screw would be a tip as to where the end of that flat spring is. So as the plunger goes in, the flat spring becomes compressed. It's just a flat spring, but when it becomes compressed, it bows. It just, it bows like this. And as that spring bows, it makes this inner extrusion that holds the sill, okay, this portion here, it forces that to drop. That's how these work. Um, it comes down in a guillotine sort of fashion, okay, which is what you want it to do. You want it to, as the door bottom, as the door closes and the plunger goes in and that flat spring is compressed and the bottom is pushed down, you want it to drop like this and then knife down. You don't want to have that entire surface area making contact with the floor at one time because then you'd kind of be you know, bottoming out the door operation. This really only kicks into the last five degree or so, so of opening or closing of the door. And what's really great about automatic door bottoms is this. When the door is open, they're held back up in their housing. They're not dragging constantly across the floor. But when the door closes, they, they drop down and seal real nice. Also, as you can see, as a result of that sort of action there, okay, it's going to it's going to um, contour itself to an unlevel floor. So that's a nice little thing that a regular door bottom or door sweep cannot do. Um, this, the 320AA, is the mortised version. You're going to mortise this into the bottom of your wood door. There's an image below this video showing everything important about it. Um, you know, the housing they're coming up with, you know, just over 9 sixteenths wide, okay, just less than 5 eighths. An overall height of 1 in about 7 sixteenths. Zero re really carries these dimensions out. 
to the decimal point. It's a bit hard to show that to you because that's sticking out. But anyway, the overall height is about an inch and seven sixteenths. Then your flange width is three eighths on either side, and that's where it's going to attach. There's holes drilled here for screws. Okay. Now you can cut these down in the field from obviously opposite the uh, opposite of the hinge side. You're not going to cut down this portion here with the bolt. Okay. And really, you can safely go from the bolt pretty close to this screw because that's where the flat spring and internal assembly is going to be at. You're going to want to cut this door bottom. You know, a mortise style, you can run that the entire width of the door. The instructions will say leave it a sixteenth of clearance on either end. Yeah, sure, that's not going to kill you. And and the reason is is because they'll always ship with the seal material itself, which is a neoprene on this model, good quality synthetic rubber. They're always going to ship that a little bit long so you can trim it after the fact. If you have need for a custom length, by all means let us know by ordering the next longest piece or pieces and indicating in the comment field what net length you'd like for us to cut this back to. We're going to cut it anyway. We're going to cut it and manufacture it anyway. No reason cutting it twice. One less opportunity for something to go wrong, quite frankly. Uh, so we'll be happy to do that for you. So this model features end plates as well, and they're going to come with it no matter what. <coughs> Obviously, that's the end plate for the hinge side. Once you trim your bottom, your bolt, your adjusting bolt is going to go through that hole into the hole that's in the center of the adjusting bolt. You can insert this small little plastic, and it's real going to be almost all but impossible to see. Small but a uh, small plastic plug, and the point of that is, is this is going to make contact with your frame constantly, steel frame and most likely a wood frame. And that little piece of plastic capping that off will help uh, reduce the amount of wear and tear as that plunger is constantly making contact with the jam. That's what that'll do. So your end caps, you'll get a blank end cap for the lock side. You'll get the end cap with the hole for the hinge side. You're going to get screws to hold all this. Then you're going to get screws to hold all this to the bottom of the door. Now mortising for this is not difficult, um, especially if you know your way around a router. Mortising for this conceptually is not difficult, even if you have never used a router before. But the bottom line is this. Um, if you're manufacturing a door or having a door manufactured, have the door manufacturer route for this. Send them a link to the installation or the product brochure showing them import, everything important dimensionally about it or even sh having this unit shipped to them for proper fitting. And there was a link below this video to both the installation and the product brochure. Uh, the installation is included. That link is below this video. Okay, it's kind of generic. shows several different models. Um, the product brochure is just a catalog cut sheet right out of the Zero catalog showing you all the sister related products. This is the what, what Zero will call the economical version, okay, meaning that the this would be considered heavy, um, pardon me, this would be considered standard duty. I do want to call your attention to the drawing, it shows a rubber portion. That is, you can't see it, but it's tucked down in there. And it's it's shown, it, there's a, a, an arrow pointed to it called rubber. And that is seated in the top of this channel. And that's real nice because when the door opens, flat spring, the compression is removed from that. And your housing, your, your pardon me, your, the portion of the door bottom that's going to drop, it's going to snap back up into place. And that rubber will help deaden the sound of that inner housing being retracted back up real quick. Because it is actually kind of loud. But that rubber portion uh, by zero um, goes a long way to reducing that sound. And just in my experience, I can tell you that while you can, you can still hear that snap up, it's a lot quieter than it would otherwise be without that piece of rubber in it. 
Um, that pretty much concludes talking about automatic door bottoms. Unless, uh, you know, let me just take a moment and talk about installation. I've installed these many times. I've mortised doors for these many times. The bottom line is this. You've got your dimensions of the unit. They're shown there in the drawing. Now, you're not going to have a, a router bit that's going to be exactly, you know, 0.595 inches uh, wide. Well, you wouldn't want that anyway. Of course, you'd want something like 5 8 of an inch. You'd want like a two flute, carbide tipped, long router bit, 5 8 diameter. You'd want a plunge router. Okay. Now, when I've done these in the past, you know, you've got the base of your plunge router, and I would take an L angle. If I was going to do a lot of these, um, and you know, if you know, in the past when I have, I, you know, you, you just have the fixture or the fittings for doing this stuff, but that really comprises of just an aluminum angle that gets bolted to the edge of your router base, gets bolted to your router base. I'm going to draw. I'm going to make a real quick drawing of this. You're going to have your router. Real poor drawing here is what we're doing. Really poor. But anyway, you'll get the idea. So here's your router. Okay, now onto the base of that, you're basically going to install an L angle. Make a little bit bigger drawing here. And onto the bottom of that, your router, you're going to install, and I'm not showing it to you just flat on, but you would bolt to the bottom of it an L angle such that when you tipped the router this way, well, showing it this way, you could take the router and actually place it on the top of the door with this face of your L angle resting on the door. And I'm going to draw the door in now. There's the door shown in there. So you're going to take your router assembly and rest it on the face of the door. And you're going to want to attach your L angle to the base of the router such that the center line of the router bit is the center line of the door. And then if you've got the proper diameter, say in this case 5 eighths, I wouldn't make it any bigger than that because the margin between your screws and the edge of the flange is very tight. Put your router bit in an eighth of an inch and plow right on through. Come back, put your router assembly back onto the edge of the door, push your bit in a little bit further, and route right on down the edge of the door. And you're going to continue to do that with your plunge router until you get to the proper depth, you know, inch and seven sixteenths, uh, well, in this case, probably inch and a half uh, is what you'd want. Um, and it's very easy to do. Um, fixturing for this is going to be necessary no matter what tool you're using. Um, it's obviously a lot of setup if you're doing one, but if you're going to do 10, boy, the doors 2 through 10 are going to be a blast. They're going to be super fast, super easy to do. Uh, that's for sure. Obviously test your fitting uh, on a piece of scrap before you go plowing through your doors. If it's a fire rated wood door, you'll want to stop uh, about three minutes ago. You won't want to do any of this because you'll violate the fire rating of the door. And have your have a licensed door machiner shop do it, um, and make sure that the hardware that you're buying is is approved for a fire rated assembly. Um, Zero is a company that has lots of unique solutions to problems, and I really encourage you to review their catalog. Their door bottoms are very nice items. This is a 42 inch piece, and uh, like I said, if you have need for a custom length, let us know, and we'll you know cut it to length for you, so you don't have to end up doing that as well. Um, it'll be enough work to just get it mortised into the door. If you have any questions on the 0320AA clear anodized automatic door bottom with a neoprene sweep or any other Zero product, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you.